This presentation looks at some of the key changes in ISO 9001-2015 and IATF 16949-2016 affecting the monitoring and measuring of product and process. My name is Paul Hardiman, Director of Quality Partner. I've been working with Quality Management Systems for 25 years and I'm an IATF Witness Auditor and Trainer. So now let's take a look at the monitoring and measuring process using the turtle diagram, starting with the inputs. So obviously one of the key inputs is the monitoring and measurement requirements that have either been defined as part of customer requirements, they may have been defined as part of regulatory requirements or statutory requirements, or requirements that have been defined by the organisation based upon the risks that have been identified within the process. We then need to take into account as an input customer specific requirements. So these may not be specific requirements about the product, but may be requirements about control of monitoring and measuring the manufacturing process. And finally, we need to take into account product safety requirements. You will see when you read IATF 16949 that there is far more emphasis on the control of any product safety related characteristics or indeed any process related safety characteristics. We need to take those into account as inputs into the monitoring and measuring process. So now let's look at some of the outputs of monitoring and measuring. Obviously the primary output is we've got product and process meeting requirements defined by the customer, defined by regulatory or statutory requirements or requirements by the organisation. So for example, the output is meeting the input requirements. That whatever we've defined, we need to monitor and measure, we are doing that effectively on a day-to-day -day basis. The next output is layout and functional testing. I think there's long time been confusion around this requirement. Maybe now there's a bit more clarity in IATF 16949 that talks about we do layout and functional testing at a frequency specified by the customer. And some customers will say as part of their contracts there needs to be an annual layout inspection. But some customers won't have a requirement. So we need to understand what are the customer specific requirements about do we do, for example, dimensional layout inspection, physical layout inspection. We need to understand what does the customer want and what are we contracted to because there will be a risk. There could be costs involved in doing those layout inspections. And finally, we want product audit results, making sure that the product is meeting the relevant requirements and when we do our product audits we're making sure that we're doing them in accordance with customer requirements. So I mentioned earlier that for some customers VDA 6.5 may be relevant. If you're supplying a German customer they will want their product audits done in conformance with VDA 6.5. But the important thing is that we are monitoring and measuring the product by one of the means by doing product audits. So let's take a look at what results part are monitoring and measuring. So part of monitoring and measuring is going to be making sure that we've met the customer relevant objectives and we've met the organisation defined objectives that should be linked back to the organisation policy and strategic direction. But we have a couple of additional requirements brought in by IATF 16949. Firstly, there is a now a documented requirement that we have daily reviews where we're using alternative process control measures. So this is where we're using measures that are not the normal process control. We're implementing some alternative. What we should be doing on a daily basis is making sure that those alternative process controls are working effectively such that we supply product to meet the customer requirements. The next thing is customer scorecards and portals. We should be, as part of monitoring and measuring, going into the customer portals and reviewing customer scorecards where they're available to make sure that we're consistently meeting the customer requirements. 
This was inferred before, but now is a specific requirement, and some way now matches the third-party audit process. That third-party auditors are mandated as part of audit preparation to look at these customer portals and scorecards and look at the online data. Not look at extracted data, but look at online data. And finally, monitoring and measuring will be using a combination of system audits, process audits and product audit results to tell us whether our monitoring and measuring of processes is effective. So now let's look at the how part of the turtle diagram for monitoring and measuring. One important change within IETF 16949 is that we've got a very good system for calibration and verification and assessment of any risk of any equipment that is found out of calibration. This is not a new requirement, but because of the concept of risk-based thinking, I think there's going to be even more audit emphasis on this. And maybe it's something you really do need to look at within your own organisation internal audit process. That if we have a routine calibration or verification and we find a problem, what are we going to do about it? Are we going to have to ultimately recall product? And that will then depend on our level uh, of product identification and product traceability. So risk-based thinking is a key part of monitoring and measuring process. Measurement system analysis, there's no fundamental change within that, but it's saying that when we select equipment to do measurement system analysis, we take into account criticality or equipment that we're using to measure special characteristics on the product. So we still have to do measurement system analysis on each type of equipment specified on the control plan. But for example, if we've got 10 micrometers and we're using one of those micrometers to measure a special characteristic, that's the one that we should really focus the measurement system analysis on. We don't ignore the others, but we focus and pay special attention to the measuring systems measuring the product critical or special characteristics. Next thing is about the control plan. It's always been a requirement to keep the control plan a live document, but now we need to review the control plan at a frequency that will depend upon risk. So for example, if we've had a high degree of customer concerns, high degree of customer issues, that should prompt us to go back and look at the FMEA and then update the control plan as necessary. So this isn't doing a periodic, for example, annual review. We're keeping it dynamic and we're changing the frequency based upon the risk within a process. Set up. When we set up a job, part of monitoring and measuring should be that we've done that set up correctly. And to know that we've done the set up correctly, we've got to have documented information that we're providing to the people doing the set up. So this isn't new, but more emphasis about having the clearly defined instructions for setup personnel, and those instructions been included within the scope of the quality management system. Finally, validation of processes where we implement temporary changes. So this may be where we make a temporary change to a process. We need to make sure that we have a good validation process to make sure that those temporary change to the process are still adequate to make sure that we're going to be providing conforming product to the customer. So now let's take a look at the with what part of the turtledogram for monitoring and measuring. So what is relevant here? First thing is the testing of error proofing devices. So if we have built measuring devices into the system and those devices are there for error proofing we need to make sure they're working effectively so that's making sure that we've got controlled verified and calibrated challenge parts to test that the error proofing devices are working effectively and if we say for example we're doing daily verification that we've got results available to support that and we've got effective maintenance of those calibration masters that we're using to test the error-proofing devices. And obviously part of monitoring and measuring is that we've got suitable work environment. So this is making sure, for example, if we're doing visual inspection, that we've got the right lighting in the area, we've got the right temperature, we've got the right humidity, relevant to the monitoring and measuring of the product that we're trying to measure or the monitoring and measuring of the process 
that we're trying to measure. So even more emphasis in IETF 16949 about the suitability of the work environment. So now let's look at the with who for monitoring and measuring. As well as making sure that we've got people that are competent to do effective monitoring and measuring, and that could also include knowledge of applicable statistical concepts, we need to make sure that we've got qualified internal and external laboratories to do any measuring and monitoring activity. Really in that area there's no significant changes resulted in laboratory control. We still need to have effective controls for our internal laboratory, including documented information, and we still need to look for accredited external laboratories, unless otherwise specified by the customer. But we also need to make sure that we've got personnel competent in any customer requirements related to monitoring and measuring, particularly again if there is interface with any customer systems. So let's summarise the changes for monitoring and measuring. First of all, there is a new requirement related to the validation of temporary changes of process control. And monitoring and measuring should be making sure that those temporary changes are validated and we're monitoring those temporary controls to make sure that they're effective. I think that's one of the big changes that affects monitoring and measuring. We need to consider risk within monitoring and measuring particularly risk if we find measuring equipment that is out of calibration. How do we deal with that based upon the risk? Not a new requirement, but more emphasis because of risk-based thinking. More emphasis focus on measurement system analysis activities, particularly those measurement systems used to validate critical or special characteristics. More focus on update of the FMEA and control plan. They should drive what monitoring and measuring we do, but things will change, performance will change, customer satisfaction will change. So we periodically need to, need to go back and review FMEAs and control plans, and that frequency needs to be dependent upon risk. And finally, new requirements related to the validation of error-proofing devices, including the control and calibration of challenge parts. It's great to build error-proofing into a process, but we really do need to make sure that those error-proofing devices are working, and the way that we'll do that is to build that into instructions, to build that into control, and build it into calibration. So in conclusion, monitoring and measuring are going to play a key role in making a successful transition to ISO 9001-2015 and IETF 16949-2016.